Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, we got Carlos here who took first place at our Digimon Crest of Power tournament, our very first uh, Swiss Top Cut tournament. It was 29 players, even though it's supposed to be 32 through pre-registration, but uh, 29 were able to show up. But even then, it was such a great turnout. Um, a lot of varieties of decks, primarily yellow, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but yeah, so Carlos, um, how was your experience? Uh, well, like you said, there was a lot of good variety. Uh, I feel like the tournament attracted a lot of good players. Uh, every round was really good, and uh, the the person, the folk who turn out here are always really good anyways. Uh, very talented in terms of the game and, and real humble in terms of giving advice afterwards. So I enjoyed myself. Uh, I was able to kind of grow into the deck as I played along and, and did okay, I think. And uh, this was the first time doing a top cut because normally yep. we usually um, get to like five rounds with and then you know press records from there so having an additional three more rounds uh <laughs> so a total of like eight essentially for you right uh since you got first place i mean how was it well that actually saved me uh in terms of the uh initial rounds i didn't do too high i barely scraped by into the top eight uh luckily the folk that i beat uh, beat other folk and the folk that I lost to beat the correct people in order to get me into the tiebreaker. So I just made it into top eight. And uh, by the time I made it into the knockouts, I, I felt really comfortable with, with my ratios and my adjustments. So, cool. and let's, uh, let's go through them now. Cool. So essentially, it's uh, I think you'll find that it's a standard war gray with some adjustments for made for the um, Security, con security control deck. Uh, and so what we have for the eggs, I ended up going for uh, four Upas and uh, one Koromon. Um, I think this could easily be reversed uh, or maybe even, you know, three, two, uh, depending on how you end up balancing your uh, slash on Jamans and, uh, and Magna Jamon if you choose to put that. I ended up going for Upa so that I can dig into the deck a little bit more. Um, and there were only a some occasions where I really was missing the Koromon. Uh, but overall, the digging helped out a lot more just because I wanted to get uh, into my uh, pieces, my rookies, to kind of uh, rush uh, with uh, Angel Woman and that sort of thing. What was the kind of consideration of bumping Koromon to two? Uh, well, so there were a few times where I was basically just a thousand short of clearing a board. Uh, I I did okay in terms of normally I use War Gray to attack into something that they've um, left suspended, and then I'll clear out the secondary Digimon that's on the board. And there are a couple of occasions where I was trying to clear the board and ended up a thousand short. Uh, so that that was a point where I missed Koro. But if you're really only concentrating on uh, ambushing their security in the first place, it's not the end of the world uh, to not see the Koro. So um, I I think I'll I for sure want three. Uh, I don't I don't think I'd go back to the ratio of one to four or rather four to one uh, with more Koromon. Um, in terms of the uh, rookies, uh, this is. Pretty standard here, I think. Uh, so you got the four pulse mods, which are incredible um, for any yellow deck. I think uh, I played the deck without it, basically due to availability, and it really does change uh, the way that you end up having to dig again uh, between these two cards, between the upas and the pulse mods. Digging just becomes incredibly uh, simple. And I'm maxing out on the uh, bushi agumans uh, for the sake of uh, basically ensuring that you can go bushy for game or, uh, that, or so you don't feel bad when you, uh, I, so I initially played this at two. Uh, I think that was the original ratios for a lot of folk. And I always felt like I had to hold it in my hand in order to wait for the Angel Woman to, to bring this out and get and be live for that. Uh, but when you run four, you don't feel too bad having to digivolve this onto, uh, one of your, um, one of your babies and, and digging through the deck that way because you know you'll get into another one and even if you don't if this one crashes into your security you have another way to bring it out uh via the mega setup that, that i play so um <clears throat> for um salomon uh this is one that i see folk not really running it for and i think i understand just because people want to see like uh uh, the Patamons from the, the promo Patamon or uh, the starter deck Patamon just to get something more immediate in terms of the promo. I like this just because I can play, I can feel a little safer attacking into security with it. 
uh, early on. If I'm at, if I'm at two security or even three security, I don't have to wait till I'm basically at one security in order to get the benefit. You do have to wait to attack, but most of the time I'm raising this out anyways, or uh, I'm not trying to get this out uh, off of a normal um, uh, on play kind of uh, strategy. So. Uh, I don't feel too bad with four. I actually really like it. I, I try my best to stay at three security exactly so that I can get uh, pulse bonds effect off uh, to, to a maximum benefit. And so I feel a little safer from attacks. And I think um, a flex spot would be the, the two lot mons. I initially was playing this at four just because I didn't have pulse. And so I end up with a four uh, pulse mon lineup and the rest were the patamons. Um, but I fell in love with this card in terms of what it does for the deck. Uh, oftentimes you're trying to get to three and this helps you get there. This helps you basically uh, if you have uh, an Angel Woman or a Warbray already set to go, but you're at uh, five security, you can just play this out. Uh, normally you have three security, uh, three memory because of your T case. So you just play this, uh, pull one of your cards from the security stack, and then you draw, and then you get your war grade to pull the other, and you can prop off uh, Andrew Lamont's effect. So it goes, it kind of acts as another pseudo um, uh, way to manipulate your, your security stack. And I really enjoy the draw power because uh, if you get it early on and you don't see your pulse mods, then um, it it just gets the deck going. How often did your opponents try to keep you at least four security? It didn't happen as often as I would have assumed. Uh, most of the time, I think, uh, is especially in the mirror, you would assume that they would kind of keep in mind that a lot of your effects uh, go nuts around that time. It, I might not have noticed it though, because maybe by the time they even got an attack off on me, I, I'm basically holding a way to go from five to three. Uh, so like I said, if I'm at five and my opponent doesn't want to touch me yet, uh, I'll, I have a ward ray ready. I'll just drop this or drop uh, the blinding, blinding light, blinding ray. Uh, so that'll put me right at three. So it takes lets me take my own fate into my own hands kind of thing. And then from here, that's why I like to have these at fours. I know I get real aggressive with manipulating my security that way. So I just uh, I put an extra way to, to save myself. And uh, speaking of that, uh, the next cards are the four, uh, rather the two Lusamons. Initially had this at one, uh, but the deck ran a lot. It felt a lot safer with, with the two Lusamons. Uh, uh, probably again because of how aggressive I get with lot mods and that sort of thing and how often I attack early with war grays but I feel like this really punishes um, uh, the, it helps me attack into uh, my opponent early and uh, basically saves me from punishing myself essentially from the way that I play so uh, I enjoy it too I would not play any more than that because uh, while I do like to drop this uh, hard hard cost at five if, if you got more, you might be drawing them early before he's even live to drop, uh, to drop it for five. So uh, draw it, and dropping it for five isn't the worst, especially if you and your opponent both have uh, tamers out, uh, memory tamers. Normally you'll, you'll pitch evolve for one and then drop this and put your opponent at three kind of thing. So um, yeah, that, that's not the end of the world there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so that's that's all for the uh, level threes. And I can uh, scooch these on over here just for the sake of... Uh, fitting over the, the champions, which is probably the, the least contested lineup, I think, of any War Grey deck. Most of the, most War Grey Mons, uh, or Yellow War Greys play the four Turrier Mon, uh, the, and maybe some sort of variation of uh, four Fetal Mon, and the three Unimon. Um, I really love these, of course, because of the one drop and, uh, the amount of times I actually drop this for five and don't feel bad about it uh, is is pretty nuts. Um, uh, so I don't think I would, uh, and actually this one I end up dropping a lot for, for six, especially if both people have memory uh, tamers. So it's not the end of the world if you have to hard drop, but I love these just because I like to uh, choke the opponent as, as much as I can, uh, especially the, uh, the mirror match, um, uh, leaving your opponent at one so that they can't really make any aggressive plays on you is, is, the, is pretty key, I think. Uh, whoever gets the war gray out first and whoever gets the memory tamer out first tends to be the one that that prevails at the end of the at the end of the match so um so i'll just move these guys over here for a sec and then the uh ultimates is where that might it's a little bit funny but not too crazy so of course for angel woman um she's on my 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, do you mean like the band watch kind of thing or the limit watch? Well, for a lot of players that, you know, play with and against yellow, yeah. uh, she can be very problematic for Certainly. Players. Yeah. I, I I certainly acknowledge that. I I don't like the I don't like having the chats of uh, we should limit or ban this kind of thing. I kind of like how Wild West Digimon is right now in terms of everyone gets to aside from green, of course. Uh, they've had a couple cards hit, but um, you have to be at three to prop it off. So to to get the effect. Now, granted, someone else made the good point during the the tournament that well, her on Digivolution effect is good enough for her to just have on its own, and then you have an inherited that's really good. So I can, I'll, I'll certainly concede that that she had two really good effects that uh, make her good, but I, uh, maybe because I play it, I don't, <laughs> don't want to see it touched. Uh, but um, I played three or growl uh, just because uh, the amount of times that I ended up having to uh, hard drop ultimates. Uh, I, I think the ratios are okay in terms of uh, rookies and champions, but there were still occasions where I would end up kind of breaking and I would end up stuck having to drop an ultimate and it doesn't feel painful against um, uh, Megazoo or security control, but against other decks that are doing a really good job of choking you, it feels rough. Uh, so I dropped one down for, um, for kind of a pet card that I have, which is uh, Magna Anjumon. Uh, just because if I thought, well, if I'm going to drop something hard, I want to get an effect off. And I always really wanted to play this in the deck anyways. And that is kind of what, the reason why I ended up playing a couple other cards uh, down the line. But uh, it did it it did well. I was really pleased with it. There were a couple of occasions where I ended up hard dropping it early. Uh, if my opponent has Memory Tamer, again, it doesn't feel as painful because you can easily manipulate yourself to where you, you put them at three or possibly four. Uh, and you get a security off it, which uh, I think is more valuable early on, uh, basically just to... Uh, drop this, put a war gray on top, and so you've netted that uh, that you've lost no memory. And if all you've done is basically gone for an attack on uh, one of their Digimon, then that's okay. When you're going for their security, I think that's less fun because uh, often you want to be attacking when you're at three. But uh, just in in some circumstances, circumstances I think it's perfect. Um, uh, early to mid game, I think it's good. If it's late game and you're dropping this guy, you're probably in a bad spot, uh, and so it's. Uh, you know, I would argue that either of these two wouldn't do as well for you, but um, but yeah, a pet card that ended up doing well. The the inheritable uh, helped me out just because uh, you, again I try to stay at three, so you get a, a thousand for that uh, for every three cards you have, uh, and <clears throat> puts my war gray up a little bit higher, so it survived a couple of security checks when it normally would not have. Um, Let's see, and I can put the uh, Megas here. So I play uh, two Slash Anjumon just to kind of complement the War uh, war Grouse. And uh, I think this could easily be, with the rookie lineup, it could easily be Magna Dramons. I didn't like that. I did end up testing it. But just the way that I play, I often found myself kind of looking at my opponent's board and thinking, I really would like to get rid of some of that stuff that's on there. Uh, so I prefer to play the Slash. Uh, and ju just to know that I have some control over my opponent's board. Uh, and it feels a little bit less uh, uh, fun, of course, to attack with this because of its uh, low attack. But most of them thinking once he's gotten something, gotten rid of something on the board, uh, he's done his job. And hopefully I have a um, uh, boulder arm to Digivolve on top of that. Uh, and, and then you're good to go. Um, <clears throat> the um, Put these guys, because they're the two of. By the two of for the... Uh, uh, Megas are Mastamon, and this is another card that, along with these, I always kind of wanted to build a deck with these two in it, and I thought, in terms of the strategy, in terms of what uh, Yellow does, which is basically mess around with their uh, security stack, put stuff back on top, take from it kind of thing, and play basically using your your trash, your hand, and your security. I thought they fit in well, and but I primarily put them in to combat, which the deck that I thought was the hardest for me to play up against, which was security control of any sort, you know, red, yellow, purple, uh, blue kind of thing. Uh, and it ended up doing really well for me. That was the final uh, of, of the tournament. And uh, this card came in clutch, getting rid of memory of security that I didn't have to attack into. It can be kind of a pseudo war gray in that you can digivolve on top of Andrew Woman. Uh, and if you have a uh, Bushi in your in your trash, and you have a Bushi in your hand. You've gotten rid of one security. Then you attack. You use uh, that effect to bring out the Bushi. 
so you've gotten off another attack. So essentially, you got rid of one security from the uh, from the effect, uh, one from Mastermind's attack, and then two from the Bushi that you got, one from this one and one from the trash. And uh, it, I think it, it helps you. It stays on theme with the deck, which is to rush out uh, rookies, and, but it gives you a bigger pool to use. So not just your hand. Now you can use your trash to do that as well, and you get security tax off. The, the downside, of course, is it, it costs four, but you can manipulate your memory pretty well. And, it's, and occasionally your opponent leaves you on four anyways. Just when you get your memory tamer off, they think, well, I might as well. Like, what's three versus four? And they're just trying to get big plays and recover. Uh, so you end up doing all right. How often did that happen during your matches? Um, pretty often. I would say that uh, a decent amount of the time, I didn't end up having to use my blinding uh, to my blinding ray in order to manipulate the memory. There were occasions where I did. Uh, the nice thing about that is uh, that you can leave them at one on, if they don't have a memory tamer. If you're on three and you have yours, uh, but ideally, of course, you're you're hoping to to attack and and finish off the game with Mastamon. Uh, so, uh, uh, I would actually say probably like fifty fifty, which I think is pretty uh, generous in terms of. Uh, the amount of times you could get a level four, or rather a four cost digivolution off um, uh, uh, for your turn. Did Massimo catch a lot of people off guard? Absolutely. Uh, most most folk, uh, I think, were uh, these three. Uh, Magna Andromon absolutely makes sense, where people will kind of look at you and go, what are you doing? Uh, but Massimo, uh, and I'm surprised because of how much, uh, it, how close it kind of mimics uh, Wargray's effect that people were surprised but it just gives you access to two more of those effects of taking out two at least two security uh, just with this alone and then you get uh, oftentimes to bring out lucimon and recover what i just lost and you can use this without having a security so that's another thing that war gray doesn't have going for it is that war gray needs to get uh needs to have a security in order to get that second attack off this can uh, you can use this effect to get rid of a security on your opponent's side and uh, bring out a rookie still uh so uh, often they were caught by surprise, but most of the time when they were, it was pretty close to being the end of the game anyways. And so they, I think that they were in a way sort of impressed, uh, but certainly taken aback just to see something that's a little bit, uh, less standard, uh, but it came in clutch. I was really pleased with it by the end of the, by the end tournament. And of course you play, I played a four gray, um, and you could probably drop one of, of any of these, uh, megas, uh, depending on how you want to put your ratios. I, I kind of liked it at four because I this this again is a hard drop that I don't mind playing, especially early on. And so if I'm going early, I want to drop the 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 magna. I really don't feel bad uh, going into a slash or that sort of thing, uh, or a war gray even. Uh, I go into this real early often and then try to build another a second one in the back. So that, that's that's generally what I tend to do. I try to put something out on the board early and then board, put something in the back. I don't like having only something in the back. It feels too passive. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of impatient in that sense. Um, let's see, to round off uh, Digimon, we'll play the two Balder Arm. Um, this was at three at one point, and I ended up dropping the third for a Mastamon, and uh, uh, I don't think I'll, I'll change it back. I think this is, I, you, generally I try to match up the, the ratios between these two. Uh, just because of how nice it feels to drop a slash and then drop a boulder arm on top of that uh, and clear a board that way, basically without attacking. Uh, but <clears throat> because these were purple and I couldn't play this on top of that, I decided, well, I can't try and fit in the third of the of the, of the boulder arm just in case I, I only have the mass amount in my hand. So I'm going to just drop this and go with, uh, with that ratio. And it worked out. I was really happy with it. So I'm going to move these guys over real quick just to fit in... Um, the uh, next cards, which are the standard, I think, just the, the three blinding ray. It's enough to where you see it, and um, I think four is only over kill because it doesn't do anything in your security. Um, it, it, you often you see it in security, and you're often able to pull it out with something like TK or even Lotmon, which is, again, why I don't feel bad playing uh, three. Um, but any more of any more than three of this or two of this in this particular deck, I think would be uh, kind of overkill. And just the way that I put it together, I think, uh, I don't think I could find the room. And for the most part, you're using blind array where at a point where you don't even have like zero, like one to zero yep. security. Yep. No, 
It's a lot of cush that you can't go for that extended play for Massimon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I tend to... I tend to use it pretty early, and if it's not this, then I use the Lotmon. So, uh, uh, in combination with the War Gray or something like that. And, and occasionally, if you're being passive or if you're building only in the back, uh, your opponent will attack, or maybe if you only have a blocker, you just let it go through and let them take one off of you, and that's fine. Maybe they will take out, if they attack into a Balder armor, it'll take out their Digimon. Uh, and then you can just go with War Gray after that. The 2TK ever felt like you wish you would have seen him earlier in the game, or? I mean, I mean, it's a, it looks like a really tight <laughs> list right here. It's tight, and I actually, no, I don't think that there was ever a scenario where, because in my mind, this always acted as kind of a pseudo-TK. It was basically meant to say, if you want three memory in a turn, you have a way to get there. Uh, and this, you can play with it with at no cost kind of thing. I really only ever want to see this, um, even... When I see this, I think I only drop it right away if my opponent has already dropped their own memory tamer and kind of left me at a decent spot to where I can play it without uh, giving them four memory at that point. Um, uh, and <clears throat> I never end up with a scenario. Maybe the de the deck just draw drew well, uh, but the amount of draw engine that the basically the draw engine it has in the uh, the one costage evolutions, the Upas and the Pulse Mons and Lotmon. I feel like I was able to dig all right, uh, and I never ended up at a, at a point where I felt like, dude, I really wish I was at three. I always found a way to get to three. That's cool. Uh, at any point, uh, what's I going to say? Memory choking was an issue against you? I, I think the the time it was was against... Uh, the mirror, obviously, is, gonna, is kind of a race, and, and if the other person's playing it, uh, the way I do is where I try to choke at the same time. Uh, so I only really ever go for the big plays in the mirror if, if I have the war grain hand, and I basically have the whole lineup, and I, so I, I'll drop as much as I can. But um, the, the match where I really saw it uh, being prevalent was in a yell, like a, sh a shine war gray kind of mix uh, where they have a bunch of tamers. And so they were always at a point where they had a tamer pretty early uh, and uh, were able to basically play a lot of stuff that they couldn't early on for free and then leave you at close to one. And so at that point, I felt like th that was kind of rough. That's where I felt like I might have been getting choked. Um, yeah, but they have access to not just TKs, they play Kari's and that sort of thing. And so I think that that's a little bit unfair to to, to think maybe I need to up this in response to the memory. Very specific yeah, that, uh, for a very like specific. How many people play Shine Raymond, right? Raymond, right? Uh, well, I've run into it. Um, so the Shine and the War Grade combo, I want run into it a couple times. And in the tournament, I ended up running into it in Swiss and then the same fella in uh, the Knockout. Oh, so, so there was a run knock. Uh, there's, there certainly was. And the first time he took it, and the second, and when I faced him in the Knockouts, I was able to get mine back. And so I was really pleased with that. Um, uh, uh, it's, I, I was at the time I was just I saying if I can take one game off him uh, I'll be pleased but uh, it ended up being the match and so I was real stuck with it yeah you put him in third place <laughs> <laughs> very good I'm, I'm alright with that yeah <laughs> but he, he was he was a very gracious excellent player I, I would argue that uh, I actually wouldn't even argue I would just say that the, the players that I ran into in the knockout portion and most of the Swiss I, I think are still superior players to me in terms of how they deck build and how they think. Um, so I was stoked to get anything off of them. Uh, and again, they were all real gracious, as everyone is in this uh, this place. So. And what's actually even more interesting is that um, the week before that, you kind of bombed with the same deck, right? I ended up top four, so it wasn't top what four? I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, that came off the back of uh, winning a tournament uh, on Father's Day. Uh, and the joke at the time was that I just won it because I'm a Oh, not that one. The one that was the week after. I didn't. I didn't participate oh. uh, week after, so I ended okay. up missing one. Yeah. So maybe that's why I thought you yeah. bombed. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering. I'm like, uh, top four doesn't feel like a bomb, but it it actually, in terms of the matches, though, it, even though I got top four, I still don't feel like I end up playing as well as I did the, did that tournament before. So I do agree that it, it didn't go as well as I wanted to at that time. But uh, but yeah, it, it, and. I think every week I ended up changing the ratios. This is the only time that I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to stick with this for any uh, bigger tournaments that I end up uh, competing in or, or um, tournaments moving forward until the end of the format. I think yeah, you see what... like 
this month. <laughs> yeah, just this month. There's the uh, online one coming up in on the uh, the next weekend. So that's I think this is a list I'll take there and and I'll try my luck just because of, of how in tune I feel with it. By the end of it, the deck felt happy. I felt happy with the deck, and so I was good with that. All right. Is there any shout outs you want to give? Uh, certainly, yeah. So I want to give shout outs to uh, CSG and to Matt uh, for running an excellent weekly tournament not just this uh uh crest of power tournament uh the folk here a shout out to everyone uh, who plays here and uh, my final opponent uh jensen uh who was very very gracious and very uh we were just bantering at each other during the final we were having fun i think we were just happy I, he, he expressed that he was just happy to see me get that far and uh, i was certainly happy to to finally get a win off of him um and then I have a YouTube channel, uh, Trench LP is just what it's called, uh, where I used to post uh, Yu-Gi-Oh videos, and I'm hoping to post some Digimon videos up there. Uh, so probably we'll talk about this deck on there at least a little bit. But the deck profile will be uh, exclusive to this channel, I think, to CSG. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely plug in your channel as well. Uh, can't wait to see more content from you. Um, are you planning on building some... Well, I know you said you're pretty much going to be sticking to this for this format. Uh, with set five coming around the corner, do you have any ideas of changes up? I mean, there's the practical things that people will do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of um, editing this deck, I actually don't don't quite know what I have planned for it. I like to kind of feel it out uh, and just play things and see what I need by the end of it. Um, I think a lot of folk would look at the early drafts for this for yellow or gray in the beginning of the format and look at the current builds where they're playing four pulse instead of only two, they thought two was okay. Uh, and and some of the ratios, I think people kind of get, okay, that's not quite where we need to be. So I want to just feel it out. Uh, I'm probably I'm more likely to just switch decks next format just for fun and go to like a, a the Chaos Gallimon. I think that, that looks really fun. And it was a cool looking card. Most of the time I choose decks based on what looks cool or not. And uh, War Grey looked cool to me, and Magnon Demon Mastodon looked cool to me, so. Nice. And Let's see, if we're getting first place, uh, you want a Lucimon alternate art. Mm -hmm. The one that's right there, is that the same one? It's not the same one. I actually, I'm thinking about keeping it separate just as like a, a kind of a memento, like a reminder kind of thing. I don't want to put it in anything and, and kind of lose it. I want to keep it separate and uh, I opened the box. I wish I didn't open the box. <laughs> that was, cause I got greedy with the with the box, but um, um, but yeah, I, I think I want to keep the cards themselves separate and just kind of be like, oh, you know, I actually accomplished something with this and I didn't think I could. Uh, and, uh, yep, that's what I do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, deck profile is completely sound. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm here <laughs> on an off day. We're doing a recording. You just came by on, uh, on our, one of our closing days right yep. now. So, yep. uh, really appreciate uh, the time you came to, you know, walk us through your deck, to some of the changes you would consider making, uh, the thoughts that went behind it and especially for players out there that want to make massy mana thing yeah <laughs> definitely yeah. give them a lot of hope because i mean that's the waifu card for a lot of people and they want <laughs> to make this card work and sometimes being at four uh cost dg evolution is rough yeah yeah well you can manipulate it though so I, I certainly it works for me so at least splash it in if you're if you're a yellow player try to get it in there yeah well thank you very much and for everyone that uh who's watching Click the likes, uh, leave a comment below, subscribe, uh, whatever all those YouTube people say. I, I always forget at times. I mean, the last time in a video I said lick, and I was like, oh, I meant to say click and like. Not, uh, okay. Click like and comment and subscribe. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs>